Good afternoon. It's so nice to see you all here. Um, my name is Tom Bernstein. Welcome to this ceremony honoring the 2016 Class of Young Leaders in the Liberty and Leadership Forum. As a member and now chairman of the Bush Institute's Human Freedom Advisory Council, I've seen the Liberty and Leadership Forum grow from idea into reality. Since 2014, the Institute has been piloting the program in Burma and helping young leaders build the knowledge and skills they need to succeed during their country's transition to freedom. The participants include former political prisoners, doctors, lawyers, journalists, and aspiring politicians. They are educators, women's rights advocates, and civil society leaders. They reflect the religious and ethnic diversity of their country. As different as they are, they share a common vision for Burma that is peaceful, prosperous, and free. A word to our graduates. We're proud of you for investing time and energy into the program and emerging as stronger, more effective leaders. We're especially grateful that James and Fiofio Ong are here today. They've endured so much and know more than most the true meaning of freedom. While serious challenges remain, the future of your country is brighter today because of all of you. Programs like the Liberty and Leadership Forum focus on ensuring that the next generation of leaders in Burma and elsewhere are equipped to make lasting change. Leadership is a common thread that runs throughout the Bush Institute's programs, including the Women's Initiative Fellowship and Presidential Leadership Scholars. All of this work is inspired by the example that President Bush provided during his eight years in Washington and throughout his years of service to our country. I want to highlight one aspect of this leadership that I found truly exceptional. President Bush routinely met with Democratic dissidents in the Oval Office. In fact, during his two terms in office, he openly met in different forums with more than 100 dissidents and discussed with them the situations in their countries. As my fellow Human Freedom Advisory Council member, Natan Sharansky, has noted, this made a profound difference. And I quote, he said, meeting with democratic leaders is terribly important for dissidents because even when they're not in prison, they are generally isolated in their own countries. Meeting the leader of the free world transforms the dissident in the eyes of his people from a lonely Don Quixote to the person who can expose the truth about their suffering to the outside world and influence the world to take action to address it. I, I witnessed the effects of President Bush's actions on dissidents I knew personally in, Su in Sudan, Egypt, China, and other countries. I know that it was a lifeline for them and their fellow human rights advocates. And I watched First Lady Laura Bush take a particular interest in Burma as well as other countries and help shine a spotlight on brave individuals fighting for basic human freedoms. So I'm proud to be here today and to have had the privilege of calling George Bush my friend, my business partner, and my president. I'm honored to support him in building the work of the Bush Institute and helping Laura and him achieve their highest vision for advancing freedom in the world. Please welcome to the podium the 43rd President of the United States, George W. Bush. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Bernstein. I'm surprised you didn't say I beat you in golf this morning. <laughs> of course, I did have your son as a partner. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're thrilled you're there, Chair, and I want to thank the other members of the Human Advisory Council. I look around and see many a familiar face, some of whom I had the honor of working with in the White House, uh, some of whom I got to know uh, during my time in the White House, all of whom share the same desire that Laura and I have, which is to do our best to spread freedom for the sake of peace and human dignity. 
and this is a good way to do so. Uh, I want to um, uh, call out Ken Hirsch. Ken has just taken the helm of this organization. Those of you who uh, don't know him are going to find that he's a unbelievably successful soul with a high energy level that is going to uh, really help us. And along his side is Holly Kuzmich, who uh, is uh, important for our future and does a fabulous job. Mark Langdale's with us, Harriet Myers and Karen Prothrow, all of whom are on the board. And so as board members, I hope you're motivated to continue to support this program. As a matter of fact, Laura and I were talking to some of the graduates and one of them said, keep doing this. <laughs> Don't stop. Uh, it's, uh, uh, for me, it's a uh, opportunity to try to uh, encourage and inspire future leaders. Uh, they're, uh, I mean, I'm looking at a, f a, f a future president or, a, yeah, or, a, you know, um, a retired future president. Uh, <laughs> I really believe that uh, given encouragement, and that's what we're doing, encouraging, that these uh, graduates can transform, continue to transform Burma. And so is it in the interest of the United States that be the case? Should our country care? And the answer in this center is absolutely we ought to care. We ought to care because we understand all life is precious. Every human being is in the image of an almighty. And that free societies are those that lay the foundation for peace. That's what we believe here. And in that we believe it, uh, we want to act on it. And so uh, uh, you all are uh, courageous, inquisitive, uh, energetic, concerned, and we're thrilled to be a part of your team. Uh, I too want to uh, give a shout out to Pyo Pyo and Ong and James. Now look, the reason why it's relevant is because we had a ceremony like this last year and there were two empty seats because they were in prison, because of what they believe. And so they're here to uh, receive their diploma. I think it's a diploma. Uh, yeah. Key to the city. No, it's... <laughs> and, and, uh, and we're thrilled to be with them. Uh, each one of the stories uh, of the people that are uh, received a degree are very unique and very important. And, uh, and so my hope is that uh, when you go back to your country, know that you've got a lot of friends here and people pulling for you. Some will be praying for you. All of them, all of us uh, want you to succeed. And so congratulations. It's great to be in your presence. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming ceremony. Liberty and Leadership Program, they are not investing in us alone. They are investing to the Myanmar people because uh, we, the young leaders, will go into the communities and will multiply what we learn. I'm very grateful for the Liberty and Leadership Forum for investing in me as well as investing for the futures of Burma. It's a place where I am able to develop critical thinking skills and also improve my networking skills. It gives a chance to those who don't really have time to go back to a university. Still, they are not missing their chance of upgrading their skill. In a country like Burma, I think uh, the need of developing the institutions are important, but with our context, I think people are more important because uh, those people, those citizens, they will maintain and they will strengthen this democratic society. I'm really encouraged and happy to see our country move toward democracy and there's, there will be a lot of opportunity as the country is opening up. I'm feeling happy about uh, the children's future.
So the educational initiative, uh, I'm actually mainly focusing on the women leadership programs, uh, training women uh, to make them ready for leadership positions. So I think trying to create this kind of culture where women dare to speak up, where women dare to ask questions, where women dream. Many women here uh, don't think that they can dream, dare to dream and also dare to start implementing your dreams. I'm really encouraged because I can replicate what the in instructor share to the young leaders in the grassroots level and the young leader they will again multiply it to their fellow community that's what we need you know that's uh, that's why a lot of people uh, will uh, knowing more about democracy and human rights and uh, respect to each other my vision for Burma would be where everyone in this country regardless of their ethnicity or religious belief, uh, would be able to live peacefully, uh, live in harmony, enjoy being a citizen of Burma and proud to be a Burma citizen. The program brings us a lot of hope, not only for the participant, but for the whole country as we move toward the democratic society. Good evening, President, Mrs. Bush, Boots and the friends, special guests. My name is A.A. Sen. I want to thank you all of my, uh, I want to thank you all for my experience in the Liberty and Leadership Forum, a program that's helped me grow as a leader. During my time in the United States last summer, I learned from Professor and classroom discussions about American, America's sex and challenges with democracy. I also study what it means to be a principal, effective leader. Outside the classroom, my colleague and I visited to Washington DC to witness the foundations of American democracy. Seeing democracy in action gave me hope for building a more democratic Myanmar. It also inspired me to become more involved in my country affairs, fighting poverty, creating jobs, promoting civic education, and strengthening democratic process. I work for a local watchdog group called the People Alliance for Credible Elections, BASE, which observed Myanmar Historics 2015 elections to ensure a free and fair process. Let me take this opportunity to thank the National Democratic Institute and its president, Ken Wallach, who is with us today supporting PACE. On election day, throughout the electoral process, PACE walked across Myanmar with over 2,000 citizen observer. It was my responsibility to coordinate all of these people. Election day was remarkable. The whole country buzzed with excitement. The last nationwide vote was a quarter century ago and there were many first time voters. With determination on their face, the majority of people vote for change, which was the slogan of the National League for Democracy, the major democratic opposition party at the time. After decades of conflicts, backsliding, and oppression, the integrity of the election was critically important to Myanmar futures. My organization, PACE, worked very hard to verify the process was free and fair. To be honest, the thought of managing 2,000 citizen observer on election day was stressful, but <laughs> 
My experience was that liberty and leadership foreign helped me overcome to those difficulties as I successfully managed the observers and volunteers and developed more effective work plans. Thanks to the liberty and leadership foreign, I can now think more strategic strategically about my organization's work. This program expanded me my this program expanded my horizon by helping me to better understand democracy, human rights, and leadership. My dream is to help Myanmar become a free and democratic nation. Many Americans have supported Myanmar in our struggle for freedom. Mrs. Laura Bush has been one of our greatest, strongest advocates. As First Lady, she supported Aung San Suu Kyi during her years of house arrest. She helped make sure the world knew about the, about the suffering of the Myanmar people and the movement for democracy. In 2008, Mrs. Bush visited refugees on the time Burma border so that they would not be forgotten. Today, Mrs. Bush delivered the Myanmar people through the liberty and leadership foreign. Thank you, Mrs. Bush, for myself and for my country. Please join me in welcoming former First Lady, Mrs. Bush. Thank you, thank you very much, AA. Thank you for that very sweet introduction and thank you for sharing your story with us. In 2002, I became an advocate for human rights in Burma. I was deeply troubled by the country's repressive military junta and its treatment of its opponents. The military had been in power for decades despite protests at home and outcry from abroad. But even in Burma's darkest hour, brave pro-democracy leaders like Aung San Suu Kyi remain steadfast in their commitment to a free and democratic future. I was struck by these leaders' unyielding optimism that one day Burma would be free. And today, thanks to their courageous work, Burma is much closer to that dream. This afternoon, George and I spent time with the young leaders who will graduate in just a few moments from the Liberty and Leadership Forum. They know the challenges and the frustrations that remain in Burma, and they're working to make things better and to establish a lasting peace in their country. T Thin Uman is promoting religious freedom and indigenous rights in Burma. With more than 135 ethnic groups, Burma's diversity should become an asset rather than a wedge in society. Then Yuman believes pluralism and tolerance can triumph over hatred. Investing in the education and health of the Burmese people is essential for Burma's future. And this is why Tizer Zan operates a library in Burma. For a college students who are unable to find political science texts at their university, Neighborhood parents can also take their children to this library, giving kids a safe place to read and to draw after school. Ying Zarm is developing a database to help document and resettle refugees when they begin returning home, because she believes that Burma's refugees should have a place in their country's future. Luei Ai Nang recruits and trains women to run for political office. She knows women can be catalysts for change in Burma and that the inclusion of women in every aspect of society will strengthen her community and her country. And because Burma's rich past should not be forgotten, Chit Min Lei plans to develop a museum of national remembrance that will document the history of Burma's pro-democracy movement, educating Burmese for generations to come. In just a moment, you'll hear more about the inspiring young leaders of the Liberty and Leadership Forum as they cross the stage to receive their certificates of completion 
and to join the ranks of the alumni. But first, I want to thank our Burmese young leaders in the Liberty and Leadership Forum. I'm optimistic about Burma's future because of you. I admire your courage and your strength, and I'm thrilled to celebrate your graduation with you tonight. As you travel back home to Burma, remember that President Bush and I stand with you, and we support your dreams for a better and more peaceful Burma. May God bless you, your families, and your country. This week, Pyo Pyo Ong, James, and the class of 2016 are culminating their time in the Liberty and Leadership Forum with a capstone week that demonstrates principled leadership and democracy in action in our own community. Local leaders representing more than 20 civil society organizations, media outlets, government offices, businesses, and SMU have been hosting our young leaders for site visits and day-long job shadowing experiences. We're delighted that so many of you are here tonight, and we thank you. The other highlight of our Young Leaders Week in Dallas is this graduation ceremony. And at this time, I'd like to recognize their completion in the program. Graduates, please come forward as your name is called. Ong Tan Zin U, also known as James, advocates for academic freedom and an independent education system in Burma. Released from prison last month in one of the first official acts of Burma's new democratically elected government, James plans to reestablish his, his civic education and capacity building school in Rangoon. Okay, but you wait and take a picture. Okay. <laughs> Pyo Pyo Ong's father was a political prisoner for 16 years following the 1988 revolution. She herself has been a political prisoner twice. Well, darn it. <laughs> Yet has never wavered in calling for education reform and academic freedom. Like James, she was released from prison last month. And a little fact about them, Pyo Pyong and James are married. They were newlyweds when they were arrested last year. A.A. San works with the People's Alliance for Credible Elections. For Burma's historic elections last November, she coordinated more than 2,000 domestic observers to help ensure a free and credible vote. A.A. San also works to expand economic and educational opportunities for women and is a budding entrepreneur. Chitman Lay was sentenced to 31 years in prison following pro-democracy student demonstrations in 1988, 1998. He served 14 of those years. Today, he's a leader in the 88 Generation Peace and Open Society organization and is determined to establish a museum of national remembrance to preserve the history of Burma's pro-democracy movement. <laughs> Keenthar Shanza delivers healthcare services to Burma's poor using mobile clinics sponsored by the National Health no Network, National League for Democracy. Tharshan also serves patients at the Muslim Free Hospital and has provided medical services to Burma's political prisoners. She is an alumni of the DeBoer Fellowship. <laughs> Kambun Lanung Tu provides civic education and youth training through the Nashong Education Network in Kachin State. He says you can just call him Joe, like Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe has a delightful sense of humor, but is serious about the need to end the country's long civil war and the suffering of the Burmese people. <clears throat> Lum Zong is a lawyer and political activist from Kachin State. He provides training in the areas of politics, rule of law, criminal law, and women's rights. He enthusiastically ran for parliament in 2015, and while not elected, remains undeterred in helping lead Burma's democratic transition.
Luei Nang prepares women from across Burma to run for political office. Many of her students were elected in par to parliament in 2015. Luei Nang is originally from Shan State, but lived in exile in northern Thailand until 2013. She was present during President Mrs. Bush his Bush's historic trip to Thailand in 2008. Ma Damyar worked with the International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, a Stockholm-based organization that supports democratic change around the world. She's worked to promote social accountability in Burma, engage youth in civic life, and provide leaf and resettlement assistance for victims of Cyclone Nargis. Sai I.K. Sam, or simply Sam, is a political awareness trainer with the Tai Lai Shani Nationalities Development Party and a co-founder of the Shani Youth Network. He advocates for the rights of the minority Shani people in the Kachin State and Upper Sagain regions who historically have been marginalized. <laughs> Salai David founded the Ethnic Affairs Institute, which provides voter education in ethnic minority areas of Burma. A member of the Chin tribe, David is passionate about building the capacity of Burmese youth to be advocates for change in their societies. <laughs> Sawar Mon is a human rights and land rights activist in Mon State in the southern part of Burma. A talented photographer and filmmaker, Sawar Mon aspires to train others in the use of multimedia to tell stories and report on challenges in his country. He's also a member of the Mon State Ceasefire Monitoring Committee. Soso Nwe is Joint General Secretary of the Women's League of Burma and a member of the Tavoyan Women's Union, through which she advances community mobilization and development. She's a freelance journalist and writes for the Tavoyan Voice to advocate for women's rights. Tezar San joined with other young professionals in Mandalay to open a library that lends social science books to university students and sponsors events on politics and civic affairs. A physician by training, he also provides free health care services to the poor. Tezer San also excels in organizing karaoke nights for his fellow young <laughs> leaders. <laughs> Thin Yu Mon is a program officer with the Chin Human Rights Organization, which promotes religious freedom and indigenous rights. She's also co-founder of the Myanmar Indigenous Peoples Network, which she recently represented at the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indig Indigenous Issues in New York. She wins the prize for best singing at Tezer San's karaoke nights. <laughs> <clears throat> Wa A 2s work with World Vision International focuses on children's rights, child soldiers, and human trafficking. With World Vision, Wa was among the first responders following Cyclone Nargis, which killed more than 150,000 people in 2008. His stories and photos from the Nargis hit areas were published by leading international media. He's a graduate of the DeBoer Fellowship as well. <laughs> Wint Wadi shines as a reporter and producer for BBC Media Action. Her radio show reaches millions of listeners in Burma and encourages youth to become more active and involved in their communities. For the 2015 elections, she initiated first-of-their-kind town hall meetings between candidates and voters and plans to follow up with elected officials on fulfilling their campaign promises. <laughs> Ye Win helps lead Burma's National Network for Education Reform. As a person with disabilities, Ye Win also advocates for policies to advance the rights of disabled people who suffer widespread discrimination and marginalization in Burma. <laughs> Ye Win served two years in prison for his participation in the pro-democracy demonstrations of the Saffron Revolution. Ye Win competes with his friend Sauer Mon for the title of best dancer in the class of 2016. <laughs> Ying Sarm's family fled to Thailand when she was 14 years old due to civil war. In Thailand, she joined the Shan Women's Action Network to advocate for the release of pris political prisoners from Shan State and to stop dam construction on the Sawin River. Today, Ying Sarm is honing the use of data-driven analysis to assist displaced people and refugees.
Last but not least, Evelyn promotes democracy, development, and the rights of Burma's minority Kareni community. She co-founded the Union of Kareni State Youth. Evelyn hopes to establish a social enterprise that engages women weavers in her community, helping them develop a market for their goods and support their families. So, Evelyn, Evelyn has a special gift for President and Mrs. Bush from the class of 2016. This, this beautiful pictorial tapestry is embroidered with gold thread and tells the story of a couple who have promised to remain peaceful with each other throughout their life. Please join, <laughs> Please join me in congratulating all of the graduates. I'd like to introduce Holly Kuzmich, Senior Vice President and Interim President of the George W. Bush Presidential Center. Well, thank you, Amanda, and congratulations again to all the young leaders. I feel really lazy and unaccomplished when I hear about everything that they've they've been through in their life, but we're excited for all that's yet to come for all of you, and we look forward to staying in touch with you over the years and you becoming alumni of the program. So please just know how proud of you we are here at the Bush Institute. Um, as Tom mentioned earlier, developing leaders is, is one of the central pieces of work we do here at the Bush Institute. So we're in it for the long haul. We'll support you over time. Uh, thank you for being here. and. You know, we do this leadership through our other work on the Women's Initiative Fellowship and the work we've done in Egypt and, and Tunisia at our Presidential Leadership Scholars Program. So you are joining a class of people all over the world who've been through Bush Institute leadership training. So welcome to that august group. Uh, in addition to that work on leadership, we do work on policy issues and we spur action around the world. And the other line of work we do in our Human Freedom Initiative is work on North Korean human rights. We were just talking about that earlier today. It will continue to be a focus for us here at the Bush Institute. We'll host a convening in November to spotlight uh, what we've been doing on North Korean human rights and spur continued action on that issue here and we hope around the world. So with that, thank you everyone for coming. Please join us for the reception in Cross Hall afterwards and thank you again and congratulations. Thank you.